Hello, today we're going to take a look at how we can quickly and easily fix unwanted plosive sounds in Spectra Layers Elements. Let's listen to the audio that we'll be working on during this tutorial. Positioning yourself directly in front of the windscreen on a Shure SM7B microphone provides the most proximity effect. Okay, here we have a sound file that peaks out on the very first plosive, and it comes in at about minus 7 dB, as can be seen here in the waveform display of Spectral Layers Elements. This is a completely flat, unprocessed recording. There's no clipping, and it registers at about minus 23 LUFS. This means that the levels we're working with here are ideal. They're perfect. And so the goal is to just get control over these plosives as the first step before we do any other signal processing on the file. I've adjusted my screen contrast controls a little bit, and now I'm going to zoom in on the very first plosive. It's so nice to be able to examine a problem like this in such extraordinary detail in spectral layers. The main idea here is that this file actually peaks out in the subsonic frequency range. Okay, here's the plosive, and right above it is the vowel sound that comes right after it. They're separated by 20 hertz, centered at about 80 hertz. Now, you might say that Everything above 80 hertz could be part of the desirable proximity effect of the SM7B microphone. In this particular case, then, everything above 80 hertz can get processed later using a global solution, such as a high pass filter plugin. Okay, let's listen to the sound file one more time before we start attenuating the plosives. Positioning yourself directly in front of the windscreen on a Shure SM7B microphone provides the most proximity effect. Now I have the eraser tool selected and I have it configured to just the right size, shape, and texture to deal with the plosives one by one, and there are four of them. I hover my tool over the first one and click once, and it's attenuated. Move to the second one, the third one, and finally, the fourth one. Let's listen to the result. Positioning yourself directly in front of the windscreen on a Shure SM7B microphone provides the most proximity effect. We've attenuated the plosives in the most subtle and non-invasive way with just four clicks. Now that we have the plosives under control, we can take full advantage of all the proximity effect that we need to hear from this microphone. At this point, you could leave spectral layers and take this audio content back to your project timeline where you could further shape the low end using a high pass filter plugin. On the other hand, we can accomplish everything that we need to do right here in Spectral Layers Elements in such a manner that all frequencies above a selected frequency retain their full proximity effect. I have my frequency tool selected now, and I'm going to select all the frequencies from 60 Hz all the way down to the bottom of the spectrum. I can audition this range using the spacebar. Listen to all that rumble. Let's cut these frequencies to a new layer. Edit, cut to new layer. I will call my layer low end. There it is. Isolated. Let's reduce the volume of this layer by 18 dB and audition both layers together. Positioning yourself directly in front of the windscreen on a Shure SM7B microphone provides the most proximity effect. Now, not only have we attenuated the plosives, we've attenuated the entire range to be 18 dB less than the rest. In the meantime, all of our proximity effect is retained, and this is the part of the spectrum now that we are going to shape back in our project timeline using a high-pass filter plugin. 
Conditioning your audio in spectra layers prior to hitting it with signal processing plugins on your project timeline is a really efficient way to work, and it gives you a lot more accuracy and flexibility when you get to that point of the process. For example, you will be able to make far better use of all the high-pass curves available in your EQ plugins. Now you have the freedom to arrange your plugins in any order you like. We've attenuated the plosives in spectra layers elements, so now they're not around to over-trigger your compressors. In this tutorial, we opened up spectra layers as the first step in a post-production process that leads to perfect audio. Spectra layers is amazing as a standalone application, and as I'm sure you can see here, it also helps bring out the best in all the tools that are available on your multimedia production platform. Well, thanks a lot for watching this tutorial. I hope you enjoyed it. And now you know just one more of the million things you can do inside Spectra Layers Elements.